This is where one of the most famous beers in the world is produced, Guinness. And here at the Stout is where you can drink a pint of Guinness with your own face imprinted on its foam. Let's try it out. All right, now I'm going to take my photo here at the selfie booth in order to have it imprinted on the beer. That's perfect. Nice <laughs> now for a little context. Guinness is one of the most popular beer brands in the entire world. Definitely the most popular coming out of Ireland. It's worth more than $2 billion. Now this is the machine that makes all the magic happen. Just check this out. So this is the process right now of having my photo imprinted on the head of the beer. And right there. <laughs> That's amazing. Does it look like me? All right, let me drink my own face off here with Guinness. Good Guinness. The beer tastes really fresh because it's still made here at St. James's Gate in Dublin. And it gets its water directly from the Wicklow Mountains nearby. In December 31st, 1759, Sir Arthur Guinness, not to be confused with Alec Guinness, the famous actor of Obi-Wan Kenobi, he actually signed a lease for 9,000 years. But under one caveat, they had to pay 45 pounds per year, which sounds like a pretty good deal. But where does this dark beer come from? This is called the extra dry stout. And the reason stouts came to be was because back in the 1600s, 1700s, during the Industrial Revolution in England, thousands upon thousands of people from the countryside were pouring into the cities. Beer companies had to keep up with all the demand. However, there was also high beer tax. So in order to circumvent paying some of those high taxes, they started using different types of barley in different levels of maltedness. They end up getting a dark beer, which they end up calling a porter, which end up evolving into the modern day stout. By 1799, the Guinness Company became so famous for the extra dry stout, this one over here, they decided to go full on dark beer. But it was the innovation back in the mid 1900s where they started infusing their beer with nitrogen rather than carbon dioxide and you end up getting that velvety texture to it. And as you see with the pour, the bubbles look like they're cascading down rather than bubbling up as in with most beers. One of the reasons that happens is because of their unique glass shape, which due to some complicated physics actually makes the bubbles look like they're going down when physically they're actually going up and then going down. That is a good pint of Guinness with a good long lasting head. Mm. Who knew that head could last that long? Stay thirsty, my friends. Cilantro.